Hey, Hero Metal Music Meltdown, back with another video. What I have for today, guys, is another album review. This time we're checking out the latest from the mighty High on Fire. The latest album is called Cometh the Storm. It's their follow-up to their previous album, Electric Messiah, which was out in 2019, so it has been six years since their last release, so it's been a while, long time coming. Uh, easily one of my most anticipated albums from this year. Fucking love this band. I think I discovered them... Around 2010, the Snakes Up For The Divine album, and I love this band right away. Love their sound, the heaviness, the greediness. And I started buying up their albums just when I could for a good price. And I think I've bought about half of them so far, but I haven't got all of them yet. So like I said, guys, the latest album just released on April 19th. Uh, Friday just passed through MNRK Rec uh, Heavy Records is a record label. And it's entitled again, Come of the Storm. Runtime is just over 57 minutes, 11 tracks, and it's their ninth studio album in total. And uh, it's the first album to uh, have Cody Willis, which is the new drummer. And of course, it still has uh, Matt Pike on vocals and guitar, and Jeff Matz on bass and guitar. Sorry, bass guitar, I should say. And uh, Matt Pike, in my opinion, writes some of the fucking heaviest, dirtiest riffs in metal today. That's why I really gravitated towards this band so heavily. Uh, they originally formed in 98 through in Oakland, California. They're like a really stoner sludge metal band. A little bit of, little bit of thrash metal mixed in there, but nobody does it better than these guys, in my opinion. They're, man, they're heavy. their sound is so heavy and, and dense and thick and like dirgy. God, they sound so incredible, super heavy. Uh, like I said, 11 tracks in total, guys. Uh, standout tracks for me. Opening track, Lamb's Bread, hitch in the face right away with this brutal, heavy, thick riff and pounding thunderous drums. Really beat you over the head right away, grabs your attention. And then Mike's, uh, Matt Pike's vocals come in and it's just like got that dirgy, kind of grimy delivery. Very similar to Lemmy from uh, Motorhead. So if you're missing Motorhead, this is a band for you as well. He's got that grit in his voice. It's just like dirgy and grimy sounding. Fucking love it, and um, just even even more gritty than, than than Lemmy, I would say even more so. But he's got a similar delivery to Lemmy, and uh, yeah, that Lamfred opening song is fucking beast. Perfect song to open up the album and a standard track for me. Number second track, burning down, uh, classic high and fire sludgy right into a groove. Super intense riff, thunderous drums again. Really cool, cool tune. The third track. Uh, it's called Trismegistus. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, sorry, but a little bit different of a track, a little bit more song structure on this one. Not so chaotic and like dense sounding, a little bit more spread out and a little bit more uh, breath in the album and more uh, room to breathe in the song, a little bit more division. Uh, really, they're still really heavy and, and uh, sludgy though, really cool song. Really enjoyed that one as well. Uh, the fourth song is Come at the Storm, the title track was one of the singles. Uh, this is probably their most, the song I would think of that would be played most live. It's just got that kind of vibe to it. It's, you can sing along to it a bit on the on the chorus. This one has a little bit more of a standout chorus. Uh, Matt Pike's vocals do this kind of squealing kind of thing to it. It's just really got so much energy, so much pain and like emotion when it delivers the chorus. It's really nice. And uh, the fifth track really surprised me. It's a really cool track. It's called, uh, uh, Karen, sorry, Karen, Karen Lick Yol. It's a just under a four minute instrumental. It's like a um, Middle Eastern, super heavy on a Middle Eastern scale. Uh, Turkish like instruments. It's like a Turkish folk song, but instrumental and a little bit of heaviness added to it. It's just a killer song. Really cool stuff. It's uh, that that um, Middle Eastern scale has a heaviness to it, and these guys just kind of beef it up. And I really enjoyed that song. I'm not usually an instrumental guy, but that song really ripped. And uh, number seven, for example, The Beating. Really cool, like two and a half minute, really aggressive song. Um, the attitude and, and vibe of the song was very hardcore, punkish-like. Uh, the, the deliveries of vocals were more hardcore sounding to me. It still had the griminess and the sludginess of High and Fire, but a little bit different approach in the vocal delivery. And the song structure was a little bit more more, um, what's the word, um, intense or uh, deliberate or direct. 
a really cool song and that kind of bled right into the song tough guy which went right back to that super heavy crunchy dirgy high and fire riff that you love so one kind of bled into the other really cool song as well a little bit shorter but really hit the mark and killer vocals on that one as well and uh what else we got here hunting shadows the 10th track a really cool song this one had a little bit more melody to it uh, had a little bit of more traditional metal uh, influence kind of blended in there a little bit um, still maintained the sludginess and the heaviness though but a nice blend of chorus and a little bit more melody and the final track darker fleece a 10 minute track uh, this one leaned more on the doomy side of things very uh, sludgy and doomy slower pace kind of grimy kind of more drawn out um, delivery my only gripe with that song is it could have been a little bit shorter you know after six or seven minutes there wasn't enough to, uh, enough um, dynamics in the song to keep me kind of going in the last couple of minutes i kind of got tired of the song a little bit so i think if they would have condensed that down to be a six or seven minute song it would have been a little bit more effective but overall guys not a weak track on the album loved uh, pretty much the whole album for the most part and um definitely standard uh, pros Great production, very uh, clear and crisp, and, and you can distinguish the, the uh, instrumentation, but still maintain fuzziness and distortion, and that grimy, really heavy thickness uh, that you really expect from High on Fire, so a perfect blend of the two styles of uh, production. And um, standard tracks for pros, Lamb's Bread, the, uh, the um, instrument instrumental song, the beating was really cool. Hunting uh, Hunting Shadows was really good and the title track. Uh, but every song was really good on this album. My only gripe really was the last song could have been a little bit shorter. I think it would have sounded a little bit better at the end, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, great production. Matt Pike's, Matt Pike's vocals are in killer. Uh, really grimy, does what he does best. So, so Writes some of the heaviest riffs. Solos throughout this thing are just off the charts as usual. I forgot to mention that earlier. Solo spread out through this album, all shredding and just blend with the music perfectly, nice and heavy. Uh, bass playing is really killer. There's a bass solo on one of the songs as well. So stay tuned to listen for that one. Uh, really cool stuff on that as well. The drums are really thunderous. The new drummer, Cody Willis, really blended well with this band and his drums did a really killer job. Really thunderous and heavy and really added to that, that heaviness and the denseness of the music. The easiest thing to describe this band when you're listening to them, it's like you're stuck in a room where the air is like 500% humidity, like it's just heavy and dense and heavy. It, like, you can feel yourself like digging through the, like trying to squeeze and dig through it. It's like just, it has that really heavy, super heavy, like dense, really dense sound to their music. It's just killer, killer stuff. Easily one of my favorite releases of this year. Um, in terms of a uh, subgenre for sludge and like stoner metal, easily the best album of the year so far. Comparing it to other albums like Saxon and whatever else came out this year, Judas Priest, it's right up there, guys. It's a killer fucking album. For a rating, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. It's almost a perfect album. Just that last song could have been a little bit shorter. So let me know down below, guys, what you thought of the album. What are your standout tracks? And uh, yeah, this is a fucking beast of a record. I wasn't disappointed. And I uh, really hope to come around tour in my area so I can see them live. And uh, again, guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more uh, reviews and great content. If you're new to the channel, definitely check out my other album reviews and great content. Until next time, guys, keep it metal.